Welcome to Introductory Chemistry. In this chapter one, we begin to learn about how to think of material in terms of atoms and molecules. It requires imagination and understanding. What is chemistry? Chemistry is a science that seeks to understand what matter does by studying what atoms and molecules do. Matter is anything that has mass occupies space. Matter can be transformed and chemistry is about those transformations. Virtually everything we see, feel, and touch is made of atoms and molecules. Consider soda pop being poured into a glass. It's composed of tiny particles called atoms. Now atoms are very small. A single drop of soda pop contains one billion trillion atoms. The atoms and molecules are tiny particles. They compose all common matter. And chemical bonds are attachments that hold atoms together. Here you see the carbon dioxide molecule with the uh, carbon atom in the center and two oxygen molecules on the side in a straight line. And you see the water molecule with the hydrogens and the oxygen molecule. Soda pop is a mixture of carbon dioxide molecules, water molecules, sugar molecules, and other substances that contribute to flavor and color. Here you see the carbon dioxide molecule. Here you see the water molecules. And here you see the sugar molecule, a large molecule made up of hydrogen, oxygen, and carbon. And then another kind of molecule called the flavoring molecule or color molecule. Carbon dioxide is a molecule. It consists of only three atoms, one carbon and two oxygens, and is held together in bonds that make the molecule a straight line. This particular characteristic of carbon dioxide made it a gas at room temperature. Water molecule again has three atoms, two hydrogens, and one oxygen. It's bonded together, but rather than being straight like carbon dioxide, the water molecule is bent. This particular characteristic of water and it makes it polar, and it helps make it a liquid at room temperature. Why does soda pop fizz? Well, you normally soda pop cans are sealed under pressure forcing the gaseous carbon dioxide to remain mixed with liquid water molecules in a sealed container. When the can is open, the pressure is released and the carbon dioxide molecules escaped out of the soda mixture, creating what you see, the fizz or the bubbles. Bubbles in soda pop, this helps you visualize it. Here's the soda pop and you see then the carbon dioxide molecules escaping and they form bubbles that rise to the surface and break and escape. So the important thing about this chapter is to imagine everything made out of molecules and atoms. Here you see our familiar uh, soda pop example. Here you see pointing to your skin which contains cells that contain the DNA, the helical structure of DNA is shown here and this one pointing to the lead or the graphite of a pencil uh, shows its structure and as you write along uh, layers of the graphite slough off and remain on the paper to make your writing appear. Richard Feynman is famous uh, scientist, a physicist, and he won the Nobel Prize. And he says that all things are made of atoms and molecules, and this is probably the most important idea we have in chemistry. In chemistry, we use the scientific method, and that involves observations, and they involve measuring and studying some aspect of nature. And then we make a tentative interpretation, that is, we hypothesize about the observance. Um, 
We design experiments to test the hypothesis. And when many observations are uh, carried out uh, and repeatedly, then often a simple hypothesis turns now into a law which covers a large number of observations. We also have theories, and theories are models that give a bit of explanation of what's happening, the underlying causes of what we observe. Antoine Lavoisier is a French chemist and so known as the father of modern chemistry. He made an observation about the physical world. He measured the mass of a closed container and its contents before and after burning the substance inside. He noted that the mass did not change during the burning. His observations were uh, developed into a law and so Lavoisier developed a famous law of the conservation of mass which states that in a chemical reaction matter is neither created nor destroyed. One more or more established hypothesis may form the basis of a scientific theory. Theories provide a broader and deeper explanation for observation and laws. They are often models and analogies. They often predict behavior that extends beyond the observation laws that on which they were founded. Can you tell each of the following is an observation, a law, or a theory? When a metal is burned in a closed container, the mass in the con container and its contents don't change. Well, this is not a generalization. This is an, a specific observation. Uh, matter is made of atoms. That is a theory, atomic theory, in fact. Matter is conserved in chemical reactions. That is a law, a generalized law. When wood is burned in a closed container, its mass does not change. Again, that's an observation. Theories are tested and validated by experiments. Um, over time, poor theories are eliminated and good theories, those that are consistent with experiments, they remain. So this is how scientists arrive at truth. An important theory we study in this chapter is called atomic theory, and it was uh, proposed by John Dalton. Dalton explained the law of conservation of mass by proposing that all matter was composed of small indestructible particles. And when chemical reactions occurred, it just was a mix-up, a change uh, of, uh, of bonding to making new molecules. Dalton's theory was a model of the physical world, and it went beyond the laws of observation of the time to explain these and many other observations. So in this chapter, chemistry is the study of matter and its transformations and observations are explained by the atomic theory. Here you see <coughs> a model of sodium chloride. Here's the sodium atoms and the chloride ions together in a crystal. And then you see the water molecules uh, being attracted, the oxygen to the sodium and it carrying it away. And the water molecules, the positive side being attracted to the negative chlorine and carrying this atom away. What you see is our model for salt dissolving. <laughs>